What's up guys, Ryan here. So today's video is a little bit different. Turns out no one can find employees anymore. From shoe carnival to Target to your local hip coffee shop down the street, no one can find blue-haired baristas and mixed soy lattes, and everyone's on the struggle bus. You have like one person working three shifts. They close at three o'clock because there's no one else to cover for them. And evidently the army is in the same kind of trouble right now. All right, that was my boss. He said I have to quit giving out so many insane deals. So here's what I'll do. For the next 24 hours, if you come on down to the U.S. Army Recruiting Center, we'll give you the best deal possible that you probably don't want. So MSNBC put this video out a couple weeks ago detailing the shortage the Army is facing. Uh, I'm sure every branch is kind of facing the same problems, but evidently the Army uh, is facing a little bit more. I know when I, when I joined the Army in 2004, they had to just fill bodies, right? We had two wars going on. It was chaos. You could have like one arm, congenital heart failure, and be convicted of three robberies, and they would still give you like a $5,000 bonus, but not the case anymore. So let's find out why together. The U.S. military is facing a growing recruiting shortfall. Well, for one, no one wants to go get paid 20 grand a year to low crawl in the dirt when you can do it every Saturday morning at your local Tough Mudder event. I wonder how much, you know, everyone's doing go ruck events where you go ruck sacking in the middle of the night, uh, tough mutters where you crawl under bubble wire, and like all these other kind of events where you can pay money to get treated like garbage for like four hours to two days. Even like, there's like fake Navy SEAL training now that these guys are doing where they're carrying logs at like two in the morning, people yelling at them. I wonder how much of a problem that is with the shortage in the arm, like for real. Like, no, why join when you can do all the, you know, the character building things uh, without joining and not being locked into a three-year contract, you just pay like a hundred bucks and you get a t-shirt and a headband at the end of the day. Something to think about. The pool of potential recruits has been dropping for years. So the three biggest reasons uh, for a small pool of eligible recruits are criminal backgrounds, healthcare and obesity specifically, and financial issues. So basically everyone is just obese criminals with a bad credit history. No one can even get a bank account and they spend all their money on food and then rob people. The latest figures show that only about 23% of uh, young uh, men and women in the United States meet the criteria to join, whether that's physical fitness, health, criminal background check. 20, only 23% of the U.S. population that's of age to join the military, so 18 to 37 young people, can meet the requirements to join the military. That's insane. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are obviously very concerned about the military's recruitment efforts because this is coming at a time where Russia's war in Ukraine is changing global order, as well as China saber rattling with Taiwan and in the South China Sea. All right, so basically, so far we know 23% of people are able to join. That's like 23 million-ish, maybe less, maybe more, who knows? And the biggest issues is that everyone's obese criminals with bad credit history. We never got to do boxing. When unemployment is low, the military struggles to get recruits. And with unemployment hovering around 3.5%, it can be tough to convince young people to sign up. The fiscal year for the U.S. Army ends in September, and the Army has only reached 50% of its recruiting goal for the year as of mid-July. The U.S. military needs a lot of people. The U.S. Army alone must get tens of thousands to sign up every year to replace those who leave the service. God, how bad did that suck when you had to run and grab your bags and try to organize them and everybody's just yelling at you, and it's like 90 degrees in Fort Benning, and you're just like lost, you're 18. I don't think I didn't even know how to do a load of laundry yet when I joined. I never did laundry in my life until I got to basic training. I remember still vividly like holding that duffel bag over my head, just thinking like this was a horrible life choice. I should have just got a loan out for college. The Army had a goal of signing up 60,000 people this year, but according to the Secretary of the Army, they could end up close to 15,000 short of that goal. That's not bad. I mean, it could be a lot worse, like next year, probably. Sister service branch is going to also have to think about their retention tactics, whether it's offering enlistment bonuses or other incentives to keep people in our current military force. Yeah, like how could the military increase their retainment of, of people, of soldiers? Like, look at all these private and public companies are doing now to retain talent, to keep them from going to the next competitor. But the Army is probably still doing nothing, just like before. I know when I was in, the only way they incentivized you to re-enlist was to tell you that you're going to fail life if you get out, and how hard life is, and how you're probably going to end up in a gutter someday if you don't re-enlist. That was a tactic then. I'm sure it probably still is now, according to the numbers at least. But if you think about it, like, what can they do to retain talent and get new talent? Because the incentives aren't there. Also, they're stuck in, like, the 70s and 80s. 
How do you do, fellow kids? All the recruitment stations are still like dingy buildings inside of strip malls next to an Applebee's. And no 18-year-old TikToker with hair in his eyes is going to go next to an Applebee's and go into an Army recruiting station to, uh, to see what kind of good deals he can find. In the U.S. Army, over here at the Army, we have all kinds of deals. One tool the military has in times like these are big cash bonuses. These bonuses usually apply to certain understaffed jobs and also have stipulations such as finishing training to be fully paid out. The Army is offering $40,000 for Special Forces candidates. 40000 for Special Forces candidates. But what they don't tell you is there's like a 98% chance you're going to fail your SOP C course and you're going to be at Fort Bragg uh, jumping out of a C-130 for the next six years and uh, cutting grass with hedge with, uh, with, with scissors. And the Navy is offering bonuses that can range up to over $100,000 for eligible veterans to sign up. Dude, who's getting hundred grand to sign up? I got 3000 and that was with Airborne School. Keeping troops in who are looking to exit the service is another way to bolster numbers. The Marines have recently had some success in convincing people to stay in. A major hang-up to recruiting more new soldiers are the fitness and academic requirements. So let me guess, we're going to make it easier? Huh? Is that what we're going to do? We're going to make it easier? Some services are struggling more than the others. The Army is certainly struggling the most. They're also the biggest, so that would just make sense. They're revisiting some of the fitness standards and some of the academic standards. Lucky guess right now to to try and scramble for the end of boss them boots boy i don't care if you're in the in the field this fiscal year if you're going to be a cyber technician do you really need to be able to lift x number of pounds and run five miles yes uh, i think over time we're going to have to target the expectations of our service members based on the kinds of jobs they're doing. Disproportionately of the age group of American youth that we're talking about, the military recruits from certain geographical concentrations of America. It's more geographical than it is class or race or gender specific. And these areas tend to be more conservative. Yeah, so I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio on the east side, and it was like pretty blue collar, pretty conservative. And I think everyone I know joined the military. Like if you were 18, during the Iraq war or Afghanistan war, you joined the military when you got out of high school. Uh, it was a lot better than going to community college. And I think I, I'm, I think at one point, our county had like the most uh, most veterans or the most people joined the military like out of any county, like per whatever, like per 1,000 people or something like that. I might've just made all that up just now. Literally, just no idea. I just made it up. Those that tend to be interested come from southern states where we have a lot of installations and from families in which there has at least been one family member that served. So 80% of our service members now have legacy in there. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine what it was like during the pandemic and being in the military. Oh, class A inspections. You have your face mask get inspected too. We're entering a space where more people on the right and more people on the left have more bones to pick with the military and the kind of life that they're going to have to live there. You know, there's this perception about the military is going woke and the, there are all these cultural wars inside the inside the military. I don't think that's a perception per se, but actually reality. But to be honest with you, I'm not sure. His smirk creeps me out. He looks like he's hiding a secret, like it really is woke, but he's like, <laughs> it's not woke. How much of that actually trickles down to that young 18 year old recruit from middle America who's trying to decide what he or she wants to do. Uh, Horrible form. That EIB is not getting passed. You fail the EIB lane, go on. To improve themselves and their future. The state by state fight over abortion rights could also become a factor. Military personnel stationed in one state could have access to abortion rights while others may not. There's a potential that you'll have some folks who are hesitant to join because they don't know if they're going to get sent somewhere where they don't have access to health care that they believe is a human right. So people aren't going to join a military now because they can't have an abortion possibly in the future at the base they get put at. That makes no sense. I mean, most people join the military because they messed up and they had a kid too young, and now they have a family, and they're sick of laying bricks and making like $8 an hour. So they join to get health insurance and a house and money to pay for the family. They don't like join the military to get abortions. Health factors have always been a reason for the shrinking pool of recruits, but new factors are exacerbating the crisis. If you've now got legal marijuana in much of America, and that's not okay for the troops to have with it not being federally legalized, 
But there's still companies like corporations, private corporations, public corporations that don't allow, they still drug test, right? I mean, just because it's, I don't, I don't this has such a stupid idea too. Like people aren't going to join now because they can't smoke weed. Like you, that, you wouldn't be able to get a job at a, uh, a company that you want to either. Has anybody even, do they even do drug tests anymore? I feel like that was not a thing anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. When they turned on electronic health record systems that made it so they could see the entirety of applicants' prescription histories and almost all of their medical records, whether they were seeing military or civilian doctors. I mean, it's probably a good thing, right? I mean, so it's like, you know, now that they have access to this information, it's like, hi, I want to join the infantry. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Let me see your let me see your records here. Okay, no problem. Uh, it looks like you're a complete psychopath and you're on four different meds, uh, bipolar, uh, you're suicidal, and you uh, you can't sleep at night. So we're not going to give you access to weapons um, right now. Uh, the Army in particular to look at whether or not that should disqualify. If you had ADHD as a child, but no longer have ADHD, why should that be a disqualifying factor? If you had asthma as a young child, but don't have it now. Can you grow out of asthma? Like ADHD, I think you can, right? But can you grow out of asthma? Let's look that up. Well, there's your answer for that. How you consider it is a health policy decision. The fact of the matter is, is that around a third of Americans between the ages of 18 and 40, so kind of that prime demographic that the military needs to reach, about a third of them aren't fully vaccinated, which means they're completely off the table from the start. You know, having the COVID vaccine is going to prevent you from getting COVID, but it's also going to prevent you from spreading it. And I'm pretty sure I had the anthrax vaccine like three times. The first one, because they kept giving it to us and forgetting to give us our second booster. So we kept just getting the first one and blistering up and itching. Just a fun fact. And, you know, the, the U.S. S. Teddy Roosevelt had over 600 cases and one service member actually died. So I, I just don't think that that argument carries a lot of weight. Another component that is factoring into the Pentagon subpar military recruitment is morale. The beatings will continue until morale improves. Am I right? And motivation to serve. Now, Americans' faith and trust in all institutions are declining from police to Supreme Court to church and organized religion. But the numbers show that for the U.S. military in particular, it's nothing short of a collapse in the last three years. It's very specific. I think it's important to differentiate between decisions taken by policymakers and the professionalism and conduct of the U.S. Armed Forces. Well, there we have it. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave in the comments below. I think the Army needs to definitely change something. People think that the best way to get more people in is to lower the standards. I think it's the wrong answer. I mean, have you seen the Army in China? They're not lowering the standards at all. I think, too, one thing that we don't think about is, like, recruiting is so old school. And their video, have you seen the, like, the social media they have? It's awful. But it's like, if they could get with the times on recruiting and get and make it more like, look at these online companies that... Uh, run ads and marketing campaigns and copywriting and like how persuasive they are and how good everything looks they might want to go that way i mean why can't we make a third party company that sells like recruiting to people for the army get a government contract i mean let someone else take care of it because the government can't do anything right yet alone recruit so here we are uh 15 000 people short for the year all because everyone is obese, they don't have bank accounts, they're criminals, and they won't be able to get abortions on demand. So that's evidently why uh, the army can't fill the people they need to fill. But I'm still trying to figure out what job gets a $100,000 sign-on bonus.